Bordeaux needs no introduction. For the past several centuries, it has shaped global wine culture in a way very few regions have. Bordeaux's influence truly begins in the 12th century when a royal wedding put the region under English rule. And that gave Bordeaux's winemakers a 300-year monopoly over exports to England. By the 1600s, Bordeaux was inundated with demand for both expensive and cheap wine, but the key to trading cheap wine was moving it quickly before it had time to spoil. So the Dutch engineered a system of canals throughout Bordeaux that allowed them to move product quicker. So the Medoc Peninsula, which was previously swampland, had been transformed into viable land for viticulture. One section was especially promising, an area right along the shores of the Gironde estuary, where deep gravel pits were uncovered, became what we now know as the Haute Medoc. The Haut Medoc is where we find some of Bordeaux's most prestigious appellations. Margot is the southernmost appellation of the Haut Medoc, and of the 60 chateaux classified in 1855, 21 are located in Margot. Given its size, the terroir of Margot is hard to pin down exactly, but overall it's characterized by shallower soils and wines that are more elegant rather than powerful. Moving north along the banks of the estuary, the next appellation of the Omadoc is Saint-Julien. While there are no first growths in Saint-Julien, its five second growths are very highly regarded. Elegant is a common descriptor for the wines of Saint-Julien, with smoke, tobacco, and truffle following closely behind. In the appellation of Poyac, the gravel croup of the Omedoc reached their deepest depths. This results in drier and warmer soil, which yields overall riper fruit and bolder wines. In saint Estef, the gravel croups of Poyac give way to more clay, which results in more plantings of Merlot, which is a variety that benefits from the way clay can slow down the ripening process. Bordering Saint-Julien to the south is the appellation of Listrac Medoc. And just like saint Estef, there's slightly less gravel in the soils of Listrac Medoc and more clay, which results in more Merlot and overall lighter wines. Just south of Listrac Medoc is the appellation of Moudi en Medoc, which is also known simply as Moudi. Conditions are similar to those in Listrac Medoc, so more clay, more Merlot, and overall great quality for the price, especially in great vintages. South of Medoc is the region of Grave. The name Grave refers to the gravelly soils of the region, which provide perfect conditions for a very ripe Cabernet Sauvignon. And this is because the gravel in the soil retains heat well, so the, the fruit can make the absolute most of the heat that it gets. And this gravel is concentrated in the northern section of Grave, in an area outlined by the appellation of Pessac Léonion. Established in 1987, the Pessac Léonion appellation is relatively new, and it distinguishes the more gravel-rich soils on which all the Grave Cru Classé properties are located. In the southeast section of Grave is a cluster of appellations that are famous for dessert wines. And the first and most famous is Sauterne. The appellation lies just south of the Cirone River, and each morning throughout the growing season, fog rises up off of that river and lays itself onto the vineyards of Sauterne. And in that fog is a fungus known as Botrytis cinerea. And when Botrytis gets on a grape, it punctures it with these microscopic holes, and then water is able to evaporate out of those holes. So that happens in Sauternes over the course of the growing season. The grapes shrivel up and the concentration of sugar and acid increases. And that results in the lusciously sweet dessert wines for which Sauternes is very famous. Across the Siron is the village of Barsac. And Barsac is within the boundaries of Sauternes, but it is itself an appellation as well. And many producers like Chateau Coutet choose to use the Barsac appellation instead. The soil conditions in Barsac tend to be more limestone rich, which results in wines that are slightly higher in acidity than their counterparts in Sauterne. North of Barsac is the village of Serron, and while Serron gets its name from the Siron River, it actually benefits less from that fog. As a result, much of the wine produced in Serron is dry white wine under the Grave appellation. Now across the Garonne River is the region of Entre Deux Mers, which is itself an appellation for white wines. As a geographical region, Entre Deux Mers contains several appellations, some of which are sweet wine appellations right across from Barsac and Sauterne. So tracing the Garonne River for 17 miles is the largest of those sweet wine appellations, Cadillac. So directly across the river from Barsac is the village of Lupiac, which produces sweet white wines in that same botrytis driven method. So directly across the river from Sauterne is the village of Sainte Croix du Mont, which has its own appellation for sweet white wines. Bordering the Cadillac Appellation is a true subzone of the Entre Deux Mers Appellation and is Entre Deux Mers au Benogue, which is named after the Benogue Castle in the region and it's also known for producing high quality white wines. On the opposite side of Entre Deux Mers is the region of Grave de Verre and just like Grave, 
This region is named after the gravels in its soils. Now, while this would otherwise be a green light to grow Cabernet Sauvignon, Grave de Verre produces a lot of Merlot-driven wines, which tend to be very fruit-forward, with soft tannins that are they're overall intended for early drinking. Across from Entre Deux Mers is a region known as the Libourne, which is also commonly referred to as Bordeaux's right bank. One of the most famous of the Libourne appellations is Saint-Emilion. In the centuries before the Médoc was drained, Saint-Emilion was really the heart of winemaking in Bordeaux. Now, geographically, Saint-Emilion is divided into two main sections, the limestone plateau under the city of Saint-Emilion and a glacially deposited gravel bank known as the Grave de Saint-Emilion along its northern ridge. The plateau yields wines with heightened acidity and supple fruit and silky tannins. And the Grave de Saint-Emilion is one of the only sites of Bordeaux's right bank where Cabernet Sauvignon can ripen fully. Just to the north of Saint-Emilion, there's a cluster of four satellite appellations, each with its own unique take on the Saint-Emilion style. Wines produced in the village of Puisquin are covered by the Puisquin Saint-Emilion appellation. And Puisquin Saint-Emilion is known for having a prolonged growing season, which yields very deep and robust wines. The west of Puisquin is the village of Lussac and the Lussac Saint-Emilion appellation. And the wines of this appellation tend to be quite austere and earthy with aromas of leather and spice. Montagne Saint-Emilion, which gets its name from the village of Montagne, is characterized by its cool, marl-rich soils, which result in wines that are austere, much like the wines from Lussac Saint-Emilion to the north. The small satellite appellation of Saint-Georges Saint-Emilion is known for wines with less austerity and instead more berry and stone fruit flavors. Bordering Saint-Emilion to the west is another of Bordeaux's very famous appellations, Pomerol. Unlike the Médoc, Graves, and Saint-Emilion, Pomerol has never embraced a classification system. Instead, it's built its reputation on sheer quality. Bordering Pomerol to the north is the village of Lalonde de Pomerol, which, along with the village of Neac, form the Lalonde de Pomerol appellation. Now, given the success of the Pomerol appellation, investment and interest are both on the rise in Lalonde de Pomerol. Now, continuing along, we arrive at the appellation of Canel Francec, which, like saint emilion produces lighter red wines that are driven by Merlot. And bordering Canon Francec is the appellation of Francec, which also produces lighter Merlot-driven red wines. So moving back to the Gironde estuary, we arrive at the home of some of Bordeaux's oldest vineyard sites, the Côte de Bourg. The hilly terrain of the Côte de Bourg is home to over 400 producers, and it is affectionately known as Bordeaux's Little Switzerland. Now, since 2009, there's been an effort underway to promote some of Bordeaux's lesser-known appellations by bringing them under the umbrella of the Côte de Bordeaux. The first of these appellations is the Côte de Bordeaux Blay. Just like Côte de Bourg, Côte de Bordeaux Blay is home to some of Bordeaux's oldest vineyard sites. And just east of Saint-Emilion is the Côte de Bordeaux Castillon appellation. And this appellation is well represented by women winemakers and in Bordeaux has one of the highest percentages of biodynamic, organic, and sustainable operations. The so north of Côte de Bordeaux Castillon is the Côte de Bordeaux Franc appellation. And just like the satellite appellations of Saint-Emilion, Côte de Bordeaux Franc produces some supple Merlot-driven red wines that you can find at prices that are far below those of Bordeaux's more prestigious appellations. Not far from Sauternes is the appellation of Côte de Bordeaux Saint-Macaire, which produces a range of white wines from dry to sweet. Finally, in the far eastern reaches of Bordeaux, we find the appellation of Sainte-Foy Côte de Bordeaux. And this appellation, having joined the Côte de Bordeaux, in 2016 is making very rapid strides in quality and reputation. Thank you so much. This has been a breakdown of Bordeaux from True Wine. If you'd like to get this content on your own terms, at your own pace, check out our app, True Wine. We've loaded all of this in there, including pronunciation, appellation guides, climate details, soil, varietals. It's all there. Go check it out. Thanks again.